Hello, I'm Dr. Maury Gertz, a professor uh, at the Amyloidosis Treatment Center at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. This is really a heady time for treatment of amyloidosis. I've been involved in this field for 40 years, and I've seen very, very dramatic changes such that the outcomes for patients are so dramatically improved. In fact, I just saw yesterday uh, a patient from Boca Raton, Florida, celebrating her 20th anniversary after stem cell transplantation for her amyloidosis. And it's gotten to the point with the dramatic advances in therapy, which I'll be reviewing for you, that there's never a time when it's appropriate to say not treating. We did in the past sometimes have patients who were very advanced late diagnosis go directly into hospice. This is something that we simply don't do anymore because we have so many available therapies. It would be a very rare event indeed where we wouldn't embark on a specific therapeutic trial because the benefits demonstrated have been so great, even in patients who have very serious compromise related to their amyloidosis. When I started, we used a oral combination of melphalan and prednisone. It produced hematologic responses in about 15% of patients. And so therefore 85% of patients didn't respond. So as you might imagine, the outcomes really weren't as good, but really there was a major breakthrough already about to celebrate its 20th anniversary with the introduction of bortezomib, which is a generic drug, but at the time the trade name was Velcade, which was an injection that began the revolution of treatment for amyloidosis. This agent, which poisons the amyloid producing plasma cell was demonstrated to produce very dramatic and very rapid reductions in the level of patient's light chain, which is the principal target in the treatment of patients with amyloidosis. And then it was detected that when it was combined with dexamethasone, that it even heightened the level of responses. Now, these agents are not simple to give. Both Bortezomib and Revelcade requires a fair amount of experience and knowledge in order to avoid permanent severe nerve damage, which can be occur if it's not monitored carefully. And anyone who might be watching who's been on dexamethasone knows that this can be a very difficult agent to take with fluid retention, mood swings, personality change, irritability, and insomnia. One of the nice things about the medications for amyloid is that you can almost always find the correct dose by modification that makes it tolerable and manageable. The next step forward was actually a contribution from Mayo Clinic in Arizona when the drug cyclophosphamide was added to bortezomib. This is celebrating its 12th anniversary and the addition of this cyclophosphamide, abbreviation CY, was added to bortezomib, B-O-R, and dexamethasone to give us the Cybor D regimen, three drugs, cyclophosphamide, bortezomib, dexamethasone. This kicked up the response rates into the 60% range with organ response rates in the 30% range, which still is imperfect, but realistically was a big step forward. But then finally, five years ago, with the publication of the Andromeda trial by the addition of daratumumab or Darzalex, now we have a really amazingly effective regimen for the treatment of light chain amyloidosis, Dara Cybor D, Dara VCD, and daratumumab, which is a targeted immunotherapy antibody that kills the amyloid-producing plasma cell, when combined with these three agents, results in complete elimination of the amyloid light chain, 
In 60% of patients where amyloid production becomes no longer detectable and has nearly doubled the response rates in the heart and in the kidney, that results in improved stabilization of kidney function. So dialysis risk is lower and stabilization and improvement in heart function so that patients develop improved quality of life, improved stamina, improved activities of daily living. It really was a remarkable breakthrough. And it's exciting because even though we have effective chemotherapy, there are other treatments coming down the pike because these treatments that we currently are administering our patients are designed to prevent production of amyloid. Then the question comes up, well, what about the amyloid that I already have that's already been produced, that's already been deposited in my organs? Well, there are actually now two national trials looking at antibodies that are designed to dissolve existing amyloid deposits. One produced by Kalium, which its code name is KL101, has already accrued a large number of patients and is now waiting analysis. But there's a second antibody, Bertamimab, which is still open and patients with amyloidosis can accrue to this trial if they have heart involvement and they're getting DARA, VCD, DARA, Cyborg D, and then two-thirds are getting the active amyloid breaking up antibody, dissolving antibody, and a third are getting a placebo because we have to prove its benefit. But the goal here is not only to stop the production of amyloid, but also to break up existing amyloid deposits. And in an analysis of the vital study, Bertamimab, the antibody, doubled survival at nine months in patients with advanced heart amyloid and recently published and will be shown at ASH this year, American Society of Hematology, that it improves quality of life in patients who receive Bertamimab. So these are very, very exciting times. And we have many second line therapies for the fraction of patients that don't have optimal response to their initial therapy. There are so many available medications that it's still, we have an enormous amount of optimism for our patients. There's pomalidomide and there's carfilzomib, isotuximab, and you don't have to know what all of these things are, but it's important to recognize that we have other treatments and that if you're seeing an experienced amyloidologist, they're going to be aware and they're going to be familiar. Half of patients with amyloid have a very specific genetic abnormality. And if they have it, they become candidates for a oral pill that's highly active in amyloid called venetoclax. And there are also clinical trials looking at venetoclax and derivatives in previously treated patients with amyloidosis highly effective. A uh, trade name is Venclexa. Finally, targeted immunotherapies, which I discussed on another video that will be available to you, including CAR-T and bispecific antibodies are also available for patients. And there is a global clinical trial that's being activated looking at the bispecific antibody teclistimab, trade name is Tecvali, for patients with amyloidosis that haven't had a satisfactory response to chemotherapy. And this targeted immunotherapy antibody isn't chemotherapy. It's designed to activate your body's immune system to kill the amyloid-producing plasma cells. So this is a situation now where don't give up. Keep an optimistic outlook. There are available therapies for patients but you need to be seen, quite frankly, by someone with a depth of experience in using these medicines, particularly in the amyloidosis sphere, because they're specialized pieces that a uh, provider needs to be aware of that apply to the amyloid that might not be applicable to a myeloma population. And so it's important to be aware of that. And the ever-expanding breadth of opportunities our amyloid patients can avail themselves of. So it's exciting times, and 
keep a positive outlook because there is treatment out there for you. One of the major gaps that we've always had in amyloidosis is an imaging technique that could be used to confirm a diagnosis of amyloidosis, as well as monitor patients with amyloidosis to determine if their deposits are stable, increasing, or decreasing. Now, such a imaging exists. It's called the SAP scan, but it's not available in the United States. It's primarily used in Great Britain at the National Amyloidosis Center, and there are some sites in Italy and Canada that have access to it. But this is not widely available, and it is unlikely that it'll become widely available. However, there's ongoing active research that is headed by Professor Jonathan Wall at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, looking at an imaging agent that will identify amyloid deposits of all types, confirm their presence, and allow serialized monitoring of the amyloid activity. And it's actually become such an exciting technique that Professor Wall has formed a company to actually begin to try and make this available to patients called Atralis. And the Atralis not only has this imaging agent for identifying amyloid, they also are attaching cellular poisons to actually try and dissolve the amyloid. So diagnostic imaging, but therapeutic as well. And they've already completed their phase one studies, meaning determining what the safe dose is for patients. And they're about to embark on phase two trials using their agent, which binds to the amyloid deposits and is attached to a poison to get rid of the amyloid deposits in patients with amyloidosis, and I, I keep an eye on the Atrellis website to find out what centers are opening this trial and when they'll be opening it as another therapeutic designed to treat light chain amyloidosis.